The modern American female has been said to be domineering, frigid, neurotic, repressed, and unfeminine. Her most articulate critics are men. Men admit that what really irritates them about modern women is that they can't or won't give themselves completely to men the way women did in the old days. This is undoubtedly true, and this, God knows, is a good thing. The average college girl is trapped by the male wish for dating security. Better settle for old Joe, who has been snapping at her heels on and off during freshman year. She is hardly in love with Joe in the way one might hope, but she is sincerely fond of him and she feels comfortable with him. The prospect of marrying Joe gradually becomes more attractive. Her liberal education has had the definite effect of making her question herself and some of her lifelong ideas for the first time. Sometimes shatteringly, she has learned to think intelligently about herself and her place in the world. Our liberally educated girl is not very likely to be swept away on the tide of passion. With the first feeling of lust, her mind begins working at a furious rate. Should she or shouldn't she? What are the arguments on both sides? Respect or not? Does she really want to enough? She is in the habit of analyzing everything and trying to lay a pattern for her life. To get on in this risky and nerve-wracking world, she must keep what a disillusioned male friend of mine calls the safety catch. There must always be something held in reserve, a part of her that she will give to no one, not even her husband. It is her belief in herself. It is the vision of possibility which remains long after she is mature enough to accept the eventual, gradual limitation of the things that will happen to her in life. It is the dream of the things she never did. In other ages, women were not educated to expect so much, and consequently they were less frequently disappointed. A really mature girl can absorb her disappointment by saying to herself, I can't do all the things I wanted, but instead of trying to, I can be much happier by doing my best in the few things that are possible to me. Others never give up the hope of being able to manage everything. A husband, a career, community work, children, and all the rest. A few exceptional ones can manage it, but others end up with an ulcer, a divorce, a psychiatrist, or deep disappointment. The safety catch, then, can be a woman's happiness or her doom. If my disillusioned friend complains about it, he had better realize that as long as he wants an educated woman, his chances of finding one who is also willing to be totally dominated by her husband are fairly slim.